2014, the hacker was a member of the scientific advisory board, which was set up by the then UN Secretary General Ban Received many recognitions, many awards. Just to name a few of them, Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany, Honorary Senator of the University of Würzburg, Prize of the Urban Burkhardt Foundation for Promotion of Science, Gail Lussac Humboldt Science Award, Andre Luov Award of the Federation of European Microbiological Societies. He has many honorary degrees from different universities, including the Russian Academy of Sciences, the University of Tel Aviv, the University in Hungary, and including the University of Hyderabad. And I might mention that on this trip in the next two days, he will receive an honorary doctorate from the Jamia Millia University in Delhi. Professor Hacker has, is also an honorary member of many academies around the world and too numerous to list, but of course I cannot resist saying that he's also an honorary uh, fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, Delhi. Professor Hacker has many kinds of expertise in the area of microbiology and public health. His expertise include analysis of the pathogenicity of human pathogenic fungi, epidemiology and variability of virulence determinants in staphylococci, study of the invasion of Legionella pneumonifila, regulation of microbial virulence genes. But he also has vast experience in the area of science policy, science administration, science organization, uh, sustainable development of science, and science management and science policy. It's a great pleasure to welcome Professor Hacker to give this very special lecture this afternoon. Please welcome Professor Hacker. Dear Professor Gandaka, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank the academies and also, also the Institute uh, for the invitation. And uh, it's always a pleasure for me to be in India. I'm uh, for the third time here in Bangalore, I think, or the fourth. And uh, Therefore, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to give a lecture here. And um, as already mentioned, I would like to uh, talk a little bit on infectious diseases, how to combat infectious diseases. I will start with a little bit of, of history and um, then the situation regarding infectious diseases worldwide will be a topic. And the third topic is this particular problem. This is the problem of antibiotic resistance, which will be covered. And then I would like also to talk a little bit on the role of science academies, especially promoting science, but also in the processes of policy advice. And I think infectious diseases, infectious disease biology, is a good uh, topic in order to study what Science Academy can do in the field of um, science and, and, and policy advice. Um, here, this is the, uh, the white building, is the building of the uh, Academy in Halle. Halle is a place of south of Berlin where the Academy is located in this building. And we have also an office in Berlin um, but our main seat is not in the capital, it's next to the capital, which has also something to do with the federal structure in, in Germany. Um, the uh, infectious disease um, and the role of infectious disease will be covered, as already mentioned, and I will start with uh, infections of the past and will mention a few great scientists from the 19th and beginning of the 20th century, and the first is Robert Koch, of course, as a former president of the Robert Koch Institute. I have to mention him, but he um, was the one who studied 
the uh, infectious diseases and to ask the question, what is the reason for transmission for infectious diseases? And he was the first who really in the laboratory and then also in field visits, he was able to show that particular bacteria, viruses, particular microorganisms are responsible for particular types of infectious diseases. And uh, he mentioned this in the so-called Koch's postulate. And in this postulates, he uh, explained that a particular pathogen has a probability to enter to a specific host to induce symptoms in the host. And after re-isolation from the pathogen, it should be possible to um, also to bring these, uh, these symptoms to test animals. And uh, in addition to his work as a physician, he was a real um, uh, technologist, and he was also in charge for the um, for the uh, construction of new microscopes, which uh, uh, was a big uh, step forward in his time. The next one I would like to mention is a competitor of Robert Koch, and this is Louis Pasteur. I, spent also more than a year at the Institut Pasteur in Paris. In Pasteur, he had a different approach as Robert Koch. He wanted to um, bring uh, vaccination into the public, and he, his work is uh, also focused to the question why particular bacteria, viruses, have the capacity of one species on one hand, the capacity to infect the host and then to become pathogenic, and others do not. These are the so-called attenuated uh, pathogens, and these attenuated pathogens form the basis for vaccination. And um, so he could be considered as a father of vaccination, and um, this was in his time also a big, big step forward. The next is um, Paul Ehrlich. And Paul Ehrlich was a father of chemotherapy, and he named the new drugs in his time from the beginning of the, of the 20th century. He called these drugs magic bullets, and uh, he was the first with the uh, compound Salvazan in order to treat people against particular type of infectious disease. By the way, also against particular types of cancer. And uh, he was a pupil of Robert Koch, also a Nobel Prize winner. And um, he was a very wise person also, if you read his, his books and, and articles. I did, I did it a little bit. And then I should also mention, as the last of this um, period, Josef Lister uh, from the UK. And he worked especially in the field of antisepsis, and together with Semmelweis from Budapest, who was he was the uh, one who declared that hygiene, hand washing are important uh, steps in order to combat infectious diseases. And he uh, also asked some questions uh, on the uh, fate of pathogens uh, together with uh, other scientists. So this is a little bit of the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. But this uh, group of microbiologists were very successful. And uh, at the end of, the, um, of this golden area of microbiology, so to speak, there was a decrease in the cases of infectious diseases. I have here one uh, example. This is a case, the death, the death threat in Canada regarding tuberculosis. And you see, beginning from the uh, um, beginning of the 20th century, there was a decrease of infectious disease and, uh, in, in, in tuberculosis. And this was also true for other infections. And uh, I have a similar picture here regarding poliomyelitis, and poliomyelitis is uh, also um, dropped down 
after the uh, usage of vaccines on the basis of attenuated strains. So the work of, of Pasteur was important to bring these, um, these uh, um, an important topic one so the beginning of the 20th century and successful not only in, on a scientific viewpoint but also from the practical viewpoint in medicine and therefore in the at the middle of the 20th century the 60s uh, 70s uh, physicians but also the population were quite uh, optimistic and uh, in order to quote one person, he was a high, high an important topic, if you think on poliomyelitis, heart diseases. But one cannot say that the book of infectious diseases has to be closed because um, there are many cases of infectious disease also in our world, and I will come to that in a minute. So infections at the present. I have a few data from the uh, WHO. WHO every year uh, published uh, the numbers of cases of death uh, regarding infectious diseases and, uh, and also other, other cases, of course. And um, it became, it, it's clear from this, uh, from this picture here more than 10 million people every year die from infectious diseases, so that's a great number. There are uh, 3.2 million of infectious diseases um, res from the respiratory tract, uh, influenza, for instance, or also uh, other uh, lung disease uh, pathogens I should, uh, should mention here. Then diarrhea are uh, important but there are big successes already in the, uh, in the treatment of diarrhea because vaccines are available and, and we know more on the, uh, on the disease itself and therefore there is a decrease which is, in, uh, which is a very good success of uh, also the campaigns of WHO but there are still 1.4 million cases of death per year. Tuberculosis, I already mentioned. HIV is still still a problem, despite the fact that we have a rather good treatment regime presently. And I should mention papilloma viruses and other infections, which are the causative agent of cancers. And this is a new concept which was invented, especially by Harald Zuhausen, the German Nobel Prize winner. Um, he's now 80 years old and still active in the laboratory, and he was the one, the, one of the first, was able to show that uh, pathogens have also the capacity to induce cancer, um, and uh, that one can also develop vaccines. What he did, was vaccines against papilloma, uh, papilloma viruses, in order to treat and to prevent. actions, which I should mention here. What we need is especially new antibiotics and antimicrobials in general, not only antibiotics, but also substances against viruses and against uh, um, fungi, for instance. Um, uh, these are the antimicrobials. Then vaccines we need. We still have proper vaccines against malaria. Um, also against HIV and also uh, against tuberculosis and therefore much effort is necessary in order to develop such vaccines. What we also need is a faster and more reliable diagnostic and here new techniques in the field of molecular biology of course can help. What we also need is a monitoring system, a surveillance system and this is especially important for the WHO, the World Health Organization, in order to bring different countries, different regions of the world together in order to 
uh, use is to ask them to use similar monitoring system in order to still get an overview on the uh, on outbreaks that we can work against outbreaks in all parts of the world, I would say. And um, this is of importance because um, the Ebola crisis has shown that uh, infrastructure is necessary in all parts of the world, also in Africa, for instance, where the Ebola, where the Ebola virus was, was active. And uh, it's necessary to, to do also research in the region where these viruses and bacteria are endemic. So there is a need for activity from the field of uh, uh, medicine research, but also from the practical viewpoint. I would like to mention now one particular problem, and this is the antibiotic crisis and the antimicrobial resistance. And um, I will again begin with a picture of one of the heroes of microbiology, this is Alexander Fleming, and he was the first who um, developed an antimicrobial uh, compound, penicillin, to a status that it could, could use. Played a role in World War II, but uh, it was, of course, very much uh, important um, in uh, the treatment of antibiotics. After Alexander Fleming, Gerhard Dormack, a German uh, chemist, was the second who developed independently an, um, a, an antibiotic substance. But Fleming, he received also the Nobel. If you ask how antibiotics, uh, how, what is the action of antibiotics and what are the, res the resistant mechanisms, I have one picture here. This picture shows uh, a microbe, a model of a microbe, and it's shown here the different uh, parts of a microbe which can be used as targets for antibiotics. There's a cell wall, of course, it's called number A, the protein synthesis, and then the DNA and the RNA synthesis. There are only very few targets, and I think a future development should be to identify more and better targets for antimicrobial, for antimicrobial substances. And I should also mention that every, up to now, every antimicrobial substance which was introduced into the clinical practice um, developed a resistant mechanism. That was because there are changes in the target genes and the antibiotics out of the cell. And in addition, sometimes the antibiotics are modified and uh, show a decomposition of, uh, of these uh, the, the substances. So there are only very few target mechanisms Here again, uh, it's, it's clear that the, the bacteria or uh, other flexibility and plasticity, they can change their habits, they can also change their, uh, their properties due to mutations and deletions, but the most important point is gene transfer. And there's an always ongoing gene transfer between different species, between different um, categories of microbes. And there are different elements which can transfer the genes, plasmids, bacteriophages, genomic islands, and so on. And um, this is uh, the reason why every new introduced antibiotic in a few years period developed also a resistance. And this is uh, also true, the same mechanisms are true for the pathogenicity factors, for the disease-related factors. And I think we should keep this in mind because uh, the antibiotics uh, 
are not further a, a, a weapon of its own, and the, the processes work against us, against infection biology, so to speak. And, um, and here I have a, a, a picture to show you the, uh, some data. I will not go into detail so much, but in order to underline the argument which I used already a few uh, minutes ago, that we need new substances of antibiotics. Uh, from the uh, first half of the last century up to the end of the, cent of the century, every year substance was introduced into the market, and this is shown here. But since 1990, there are no uh, real new products, and uh, this is uh, the, the, the discovery of new classes was not, uh, was not the case. And therefore, the antimicrobial drugs uh, became more and more um, uh, unsuccessful in treatment. And this is shown here, and I think it's a quite, uh, quite interesting cartoon. Uh, just to mention one point regarding resistance, um, uh, two or three years, up to two or three years ago, the gram-positive bacteria, uh, such as Staphylococci, for instance, methicillin-resistant Staphylococci, MRSR, played an important role. But um, since, uh, I would say, 10 years, 15 years, also gram-negative bacteria are of importance. And here, one uh, drug, carbapenem, which is related uh, to penicillin, on here, and uh, you see there is an increase in resistance, despite the fact that we all know from the problem and um, so there is a real danger. I should mention here also that uh, another, back, uh, uh, another substance, cholestine, which is used also especially in intensive care units, uh, carries a, a so-called plasmid. This is a DNA, a circular DNA element which has the capacity to jump from one bacteria to the other. And this is another example for a newly developed transferable antibiotic resistance. So there, so there are a lot of activity to do uh, with regarding infectious disease and antibiotic resistance from my viewpoint is a very important topic here. And um, what kind of approaches are new and combat infectious diseases. I will now come to, I will not, not be too pessimistic with all my statements here, and will show you that there are new strategies, there are new activities, especially in the field of, uh, of science and research, and I will mention some of them here. The uh, novel approaches uh, uh, of uh, uh, anti-infective products cover new natural products, of course, and here chemistry is of importance, still of importance. The so-called phage therapy. This is a little bit a strange method, but in particular cases it was successful, and I think it it's, can be a, maybe a new strategy of uh, to use bacteriophages in order to kill pathogenic bacteria. This is the idea. Pathoblocker means to develop substances which reduce the, uh, uh, the uh, pathogenicity factors, the disease-related factors. And of course, what we also have a number of um, pathogens, if you think of malaria, dengue, and others, are transferred by vectors, Zika, and uh, here the so-called gene drive technique is discussed a lot. I will not go too deep into this, but this could be another strategy, uh, not to fight against the pathogen itself, but to fight against the carrier of the pathogens, and these are, in most cases, insects, arthropods. The other 
new approaches cover anti antibodies? I mean, this is already known since uh, many years, um, but I think there is a renaissance, especially of monoclonal antibodies, which can be used in order to treat patients of toxicology, of course. A host-based therapy is, uh, is another uh, important option in order to tackle receptors, for instance, if you think on HIV, CCR5 receptor, in order to tackle receptors which are important for the transmission of a pathogen. Small RNAs play a role, and then the famous CRISPR-Cas, the uh, majority of, of you, I think, know this new technique which was introduced three, four years ago, which has a capacity to change the genetic the, the genetic composition of um, chromosomes, also of, of pathogens, but also of patients. And from my viewpoint, this is, will be a very powerful technique also in the future, and uh, we should uh, follow this uh, with attention. Um, the two examples here, one is the antibody, you can use them for a direct uh, action against pathogens, but antibodies can also be used to, trans, uh, to transfer uh, antibiotics, antibiotic substances into the uh, cell. And um, there are also reports now showing that CRISPR-Cas, the genome uh, changing method, genome editing method, can also be used in order to attack Staphylococcus aureus, one of the important hospital-related pathogens. So there are new approaches. And uh, another one I should mention here is the so-called microbiome uh, story. This means that we all have more microbes in our gut, on our skin, uh, than cells uh, in our body, and the microbiome is, uh, so to speak, a competitor of pathogenic microbes because pathogenic microbes only uh, have show in, 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 in minority of, uh, of uh, microbes and uh, more than 99% of the microbes uh, do not cause any harm and they can be used, that's my, my impression, in the future also in order to develop new strategies to overcome the uh, pathogenic bacteria. So far, a little bit on future approaches. There are many activities in the pipeline, and um, therefore I think uh, this is a very exciting uh, discipline also in order to research and an important discipline regarding the uh, the uh, political and social implications. I will come now to that, uh, and this is my last uh, point, but I will mention a little bit more intensively um, this question, uh, infectious disease and society. Um, and of course, antibiotics, antimicrobials, um, infectious diseases, this is a matter of the society and you can read in newspapers and the politicians are interesting, interested. And of course, uh, society, uh, this is a science of course, and research is part of the society, but also policy, policy advice, education, the media are of importance also. The economy, of course, is of importance, and they all are interlinked. And from my viewpoint, science and research play a particular important role. I will give you a few comments on the different parts here. And we'll start with infections and media. And of course, the, for the media, infectious disease are always uh, important topics. This is the case with traditional media, one case here um, from the New York Times, an article uh, on HIV, but also the social media, and especially here the young, there are many students and, and young scientists in the room. Of course, they use the social media, which is also the case in Germany, but 
you can also use these social media in order to get information, to spread information on infectious agents and regarding infectious diseases. Education is a very important topic, so topic also the behavior uh, in the case of uh, an epidemic, but here on the universities, graduate schools are of importance, uh, research training groups, and, and also workshops, other, other matters of uh, education in order to uh, work against infection, infectious diseases. And of course, infectious diseases and policy advice and politics is an important topic. And I will quote one of the important figures of the 19th century, Rudolf Virchow, who was the person who first formulated the cell theory that the whole disease, the diseases are related to changes in the cell metabolism. He was in the 19th century also a member of the German parliament and uh, was a competitor of Robert Koch, one should say. Um, and he wrote in the end of the 19th century, medicine is in fact, politics is medicine on a grand scale. So the relation between politics and and uh, medicine was formulated by him already. I mentioned um, at the beginning that uh, we are in the Leopoldina in the National Academy. We have this nice house, I mentioned this. And I will give you now a few examples on uh, uh, how um, the Academy works in the field of uh, policy advice regarding infectious diseases. And before of that, I will make a few remarks on, on the Leopoldina that you get an idea also on this. The Leopoldina is the worldwide oldest science academy which still exists without interruption, it was founded in 1652 and is since the end of the 19th century in Halle. I mentioned this already and uh, there are 1,500 scientists together, also the Leopoldina, we are very proud of him as a member, and they bring the expertise to the academy, and uh, 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago, 2008, the Le Leopoldina was nominated as National Academy of Science in, in, in Germany, and here you see the former federal president, Horst Köhler, who signed the Act, and our former minister, Mrs. Chavan, then Volker Tamöhn, the former president, and Mr. Böhmer, the prime minister of the region. And uh, this was done because Germany, up to 2008, never had a national academy because of the uh, federal structure, but especially the international collaboration between academies and states are so important that the federal government and also the states, the lender, the states decided that the Leopoldina should take over the, uh, the duties of the National Academy. And the role of the Leopoldina is uh, to speak on social political questions and uh, to form, to give a framework for discussions, and they, they represent the German a scientific community and international committees, and we work very closely with our friends in India also in this uh, in this field. Um, there are a number of topics uh, Leopoldina is uh, interested in. I will mention a few of them. The most the main imp most important topics. One is biomedicine, and also one subtopic: infectious diseases. Here is the topic we are talking. Um, today, but climate change uh, is, of course, of importance. Uh, energy research, you know, uh, Germany is as a decision of the federal parliament uh, not further use nuclear power plants since uh, 2022, and there's a debate since that time, renewable energy and so. The demography is of importance because uh, in Germany the demographic curve is going down, with, uh, which is not the case in India, and 
which is good. The digitalization is an important topic, of course, and then also science and the research system. So there are a number of topics uh, we, we, we are working, and I will give you examples from the national and the international work we are doing and the um, in national and international context, context, and I will go back to the infectious disease and antibiotic resistance case. Uh, what we did is together with the Academy of Science from Hamburg, which is a new academy we published uh, uh, four years ago, or now five years ago, a uh, report on antibiotic research problems and perspectives. And what we did here, we included a research agenda on genome research, research in, on, on, on natural products of importance and some other ecological aspects, resistance development, so socioeconomical research is of importance in order to overcome this system. And uh, we sent this to transfer this statement to the public, but also to the politician. And there are some uh, new activities in the politician. The establishment of a round table belongs to this uh, industry, but also the, uh, the, the research uh, organizations, but also the administration is part of the round table. And in the last coalition degree, uh, uh, agreement, this topic, infectious diseases, was named. Um, there is a new research program, Infect Control 2020, and also a strategy from the Federal Ministry of Health. It also have an impact on society and on the uh, political arena. Uh, we published a discussion paper this year and try to make clear that the fight against infectious disease, the development of new antibiotics, are of extreme importance also in the future. And uh, the Ministry of Health, they um, uh, designed a new body, an advisory council on global health policy, where the key, the key activities are here, uh, infectious disease. You see he's the Minister of Health, Mr. Groyer, um, a few weeks ago. And this is an international group of people, and we hope that we can convince the government to invest more, to do more, in order to overcome this, uh, this problem. So in the international context, there are also, um, the Leopoldina is also uh, active, and of course, infectious disease, uh, you cannot fight against infectious disease. International collaboration is of important. And I show the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which were adopted by the United Nations two years ago. And here, medicine is an important topic, and uh, infectious disease is part of this topic. And among the 17, um, the 17 different development goals, at least seven have something to do with health problems, with uh, water quality, for instance, also with the, with the structure of the society. So we think this is an important issue also in the future. The World Health Organization is uh, active here and uh, wrote two times already global action plans against infectious diseases. And I should mention also the G7 and the G20 processes. In the G7 processes, despite the fact that the process is, is uh, that the initiators are only seven countries from the from the Western Hemisphere, uh, the Indian Academy was very successful, and this is especially true for the G20 uh, process. Here, for the first time this year, uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel. Uh, had the idea, we were asked by her whether we could organize, could bring the 20 national academies together of the G20 process. And you may remember the, uh, that the recommendations of G20 were transferred in Hamburg to the, uh, to the poli to, uh, adopted by the politics. Um, a few
academies came together uh, in Halle and um, we had uh, important or, or, or we, we uh, had an uh, agreement on or a statement on different aspects of global health policy strategies and tools to combat communicable and non-communicable diseases so and um, what we what we uh, said is that we should work on resilient health systems we should address also social environmental economical determinants of health and the strategic instruments which already on the on place should be should be used and um, what we did is uh, we transferred this uh, this um, document to Angela Merkel uh, a few weeks ago, uh, a few weeks before the meeting that was in April this year. And I think it was a quite successful, uh, quite successful paper because at the communique of the G20 meeting. These health issues are mentioned in a big paragraph, and therefore I think this was also successful. There is only one, one step forward. There should be more steps, of course, which are important. So far, a little bit also on politics and uh, the work of the academy in the field of policy advice uh, regarding infectious diseases, and we, we try to do similar things also in the future with other uh, topics. Um, no, just a moment. I will come to the end to a few remarks. I think it became clear from the uh, from my uh, from my statement here that infectious diseases are still still an important global health problem, and the fight against infectious diseases needs more effort in basic and applied science, this is important, the different areas. The increased frequency of antimicrobial resistance requires actions across all governmental sectors and society. And I try to make this clear that here education is important, advice is important, but also the economy is important, the media and so on. And science, politics and society need to develop new models of cooperation and Interaction. This is my last sentence, and I will go back to the Leopoldina in Halle, and I will thank you for your attention. Thank you. Yes, of course. Yeah. I invite questions, comments from anybody in the audience. Would like to say something? Yes, please. Is there's a, please wait for the microphone. Um, people have been isolating, uh, um, you know medicines as in which uh, for sorry i was talking about the antimicrobial resistance and people have been isolating new drugs from several kinds of reservoirs for example deep ocean and you know sediments and soils they've been looking for chemicals which could be useful from various natural yeah. uh, products so how successful has this been and uh, is this the new direction to look into yeah thank you for this question i i think of course uh, the majority or more or less all antibiotics with the exception of, of two substances, a trimetropyl sources from soils, from uh, fungi, for instance, and also from bacteria. And I think to use now alternative sources like the deep sea, for instance, or rainforest or so, this, from my viewpoint, is a uh, strategy which is very useful and timely um, because now also the instruments in medical chemistry have been were improved, and the same is true for genomic techniques. 
And from my viewpoint, this is one of the most important approach to be successful. But it needs time, of course. It needs money and it needs also new structures between the collaboration between academia, the economy and also the political sector. And yeah, we, uh, But one should uh, further work on this question, of course. Thank you. because uh, many of the pharmaceutical companies and uh, pharmaceutical companies, particularly in Germany and many other Western countries, has already done such deep mining of many places on mm. earth. But that data is not available for an academic researcher. So building this good coalition where you know the people who have the funds or have the data and have already done this analysis and bringing in an academic and intellectual look at it is something that is really doable and perhaps the academies can cement this relationship. Yeah, thank you. I mean, this is uh, of, of tremendous importance, of course, to speak. And um, I mean, there, I, I would from my viewpoint, there are, of course, data from uh, not only from companies, but also from other institutes, institutions, and uh, and it is important to share this data, I, of course. But, yes, of course. But uh, on the other hand, I mean, some of the structures which, are, which I know from the work, I, I already observed a little bit, are already known, and uh, this is another, these are, a slight modifications of already known uh, um, substances, and therefore what we need, this is uh, new compounds, new classes of compounds, and I think we need really new forms of collaboration between, between the pharmaceutical companies, uh, the state, and academia. And this is, I mentioned this briefly, that in Germany we have new this is the so-called DART program and then the program Infections 2020. And the aim of these two programs is to bring the different players together. And that's also uh, what we try to do with our round table model. So we, come, we came together already four times. And from the uh, government, the state secretary was present. And we have the heads of, of uh, research organization and, and and also um, colleagues from any topic. I mean, this is fundamental. Thank you. Yes. yes. Hmm. The emergence of uh, diseases which we never saw before. Yeah. Um, are these topics which can be Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, this is, um, this is important. Uh, by the way, we organized a meeting on climate change and infectious diseases five years ago together with INSA. With the, so that was the start, starting point, more or less. And this is on the agenda. And um, we uh, had in the, what's the World Health Summit. This is an uh, event in, in Berlin every year. Uh, I co-chaired a, a meeting just on climate change. That climate change has an impact of infectious diseases regarding vectors, vector control, then the heating. Also in Germany, there is now there are insects which never. Uh, which never appeared in, in Germany, which are uh, isolated chikungunya virus in Europe. I mean, there are a number of examples. And I think one, and, and this is the, maybe one of the advantages of the, of the um, uh, sustainability goals. And also bring these different disciplines together and, th and this nexus between infectious diseases on one hand and climate change is one of these. Uh, topics. 
Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to ask a question. I'm asking this somewhat from the point of view of a layman, but also from the point of view of an evolutionary biologist. What is the scope for preventing the emergence of antibiotic-resistant uh, bacteria, microorganisms? What is the role of the academy, the role of basic science, the clinicians, the advice to the public, that whole area? Of course, when they do happen, we need new antibiotics to deal mm -hmm. with them. But what is the scope for preventing or slowing the emergence of, of these antibiotic resistance, multidrug resistance uh, bacteria? Now, I think uh, evolution is the right catchword in this sense because, uh, you know, microbes, they change their genome frequently. And uh, you cannot avoid, you cannot stop the change of. Uh, to uh, get to try to influence the selection process. And if you use too many antibiotics, to, if the number of, of, of antibiotics are too high, then you select for um, resistant bacteria or viruses, of course. Therefore, uh, the decrease of the number of, of uh, anti-infectious agents uh, is important also from an evolutionary viewpoint. And of course, uh, prevention is, is, is important here. And uh, I mean, in Germany, we have the situation that sometimes the patients, they ask for antibiotics, even they do not know what kind of, of cold they have or so. And uh, th therefore, it's important to bring this topic also into the public in order to, uh, I mean, antibiotics are, very important uh, drugs, of course. I mean, they are uh, so important for the whole system of, uh, of medicine, and therefore one should use them only in cases which is uh, necessary. And this, uh, this type of behavior would be uh, a good start, I would say, in order to start a better prevention campaign. We have a prevention uh, campaign in Germany, and we had also one in France. I mean. This is ongoing, but it's too less. We, we have more activities and more things to do. Okay, no further questions? Let us thank Professor Hector. On oh. behalf of both academies and on oh. my personal behalf. Okay, thank you. Oh, they want uh, you to come here so that they can take a better picture. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these are from the Indian Academy of Sciences. They want me to give this to you again okay. so that we can <laughs> photograph it. Thank you very much. I have also, yes. I have also a little gift for the academies, and I will hand it over to you. This is a, a picture of the billing of in, in Halle, and, and you delivered a lecture last year, which was very successful, and therefore, as a memory, I will give you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, just in the hall opposite, there is tea, and everybody is invited for a cup of tea. <laughs>